Try it again. Well, let's go. We changed something. Changed something? The monetization is not on. Oh, we might actually be well, live we now. Feed there. Look at that. Oh, we do have a feed. Oh, no. Are we on now? I think we might actually be on now. Wow. That's cool. It only took us eight minutes to figure this out. Of course, nobody is on this one because I had to re reset it. Yeah, so now it's a different live feed than what people were sitting on, yeah? It's a different live one, yes. Yeah, because this tells me that the stream ended. I had yeah. to re reset it. Yes, yeah, so now it's a different live feed. Oh, we're on. There's like, there's people are, ju are jumping back over. I like that. That's cool. I'm glad they found it. I'm glad they found it too. Look, it's actually working. I'm hey. Not, I'm not certain how to find it myself now. Uh, I had to refresh the soap and clay uh, YouTube thing in order to do that. But it looks like we're good. Yeah, see, people are jumping back on. All right, we can stop worrying about this then. We can stop worrying about this. Okay. This is our first live, guys. We're not good at this. And we spent <laughs> eight minutes where it said we were live and we weren't really live, so. It said it was streaming. It said it was it streaming. There were all kinds of people on. It was really exciting. But I'm glad that you guys are on. So <laughs> we have a Chastity Cat and Violet and Mr. Herc's Homemade and Nancy Blake. We got some people popping on. Hello. From Hello, Arizona. Sudsers. How's it going today? How's your Sunday? So uh, we're going to do a little thing thing because this is a live, but it's also day 28. And so I have to do, you know, my little intro thing for when I edit it and keep it on the channel because it's day 28. So I got to do my thing thing because it's my thing thing and uh, say hello. I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. And then we go to the intro and we do things. And then I say, how's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 28 of 365 days of soap. And we are doing a pontoon hangout today. And Mr. Soap and Clay is joining us. It now. Did. Hey, we are here. Looks, people can see us. It makes me very happy. Excellent. Good. Yes. I'm glad they made it over. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. My God. That last link was just a trick. It was a, just a trick. I don't know how to do things. My brother was actually here earlier bottling beer, and um, he should have stayed, really, to help us out with <laughs> tech, because I'm not very techy, just across the board. But today for uh, day 28, we are doing a Q&A and a general chit chat and, uh, you know, just talking about stuff. So that'll be fun. Hello, peoples. I'm so glad that everybody's jumping onto this, this stream. This is awesome. And my brother just, just, just said he's sorry for not being here. Yes. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> Could have used you, mate. We're not good at things. But we are on the pontoon today and it's raining outside. Which totally sucks. I don't like that. It's not I don't like rain in June. No. But the audio might be weird because we're also playing with a mic. So if the audio is weird, let us know. We're trying real hard. We're figuring things out. We're 90% certain we got it dialed in, which means there's 10% anxiety at the moment. Right. But you <clears> talk really quiet and I talk really loud. So it's problematic, really. I think it works in normal circumstances. It's maybe not worth recording. Does it? Does it not? I don't know. I tend to take all the oxygen. Tarot by Tammy says we sound fine. So we're good. Thank you. Excellent. I appreciate that. Yes. We're not going to worry about that anymore. No. No, not at all. So what are we doing today? What are you talking about? I have all kinds of stuff here to like talk about and, and do. I mean, I know there's been some drama about glass. So there has I, been some drama about glass. I believe yeah. we're going to talk about glass and... um. I see scent bottles that I've not been subjected to before, and I assume they all smell like gardenia, but we're probably going to try those out, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, you can. You you can do a blind scent. Now, I've already done all of the scents for this because this is from the Magician's line, and those soaps are already made. Oh, right. But... So here's the thing. Anytime that there's a blind test, it's only me doing a blind test. That's I'm not always, true. I'm, I'm always given a bottle and told, what does this smell like? And she's already... I mean, she ordered it, so she knows the name of it and what it's supposed to smell like. She's already used it, made soap most of the time. And so it's only blind for me. And she's like, ha, no, you're wrong. That's not true. That's not true at all. <laughs> okay, so for the next live, let's do a complete blind scent test then. I will not have smelled. You will not have smelled. Because we have a new series coming out. I mean, deal. Yeah. 
but we have a new series coming up like and i buy so many things like just that i have no idea what actually comes in so that is we could true. do that we've had boxes of things show up and you don't even remember what they were for oh we could totally do that so we could both do a blind because we have the marvel series coming up after the magicians and those scents there's 20 of them that's a lot yeah i'm excited for that box like really excited now these are magician scents yeah yeah these are the magician scents right here we're doing marvel after the magicians got it yeah and that's a series that you're talking about doing a full blind test full blind marvel. test not this one I've already used these ones. One of them is completely empty, actually. <laughs> I hope it's got some smell in it. But it does. Yeah, they're all Sierra candle scents. Do you just want to smell things? I mean, I love smelling things. Maybe you can guess. <laughs> Which is always interesting. Yeah. Well, this one's nice. This is... Is it gardenia? It's not gardenia. I don't know. It's not gardenia. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Not gardenia. I'm trying to put this on the... Hell's mouth. Yeah, it's not going to work. Should I hold it so not, you can read the label on the camera? Well, I have no idea what it smells like. That's rough, actually. I smell like a little bit of mint. Mint? Interesting. Yeah, that way at the bottom. So this is the Dean Fog Bar. What does it smell That's like? It's the Dean Fog Bar? Yeah. Well, it should smell like whiskey. Yeah, I could get that like a bourbon. Right. Yeah, it's a little... You're right, though. It does have some minty smell to it. It's like a smoky mint. Right. Really. Which is very interesting. It is interesting. Chris, What's... I'm so happy that you're watching The Magicians. What's that called? Oh, it's just cold whiskey. I'm completely hooked on The Magicians. It's amazing. Yeah, it's just called whiskey. So that's the Dean Fog Bar. I mean, it's very fitting for the Dean Fog Bar. I do definitely get some hints of mint with that one, though. That was delightful to soap with, by the way. That was so good. She have ruined it. Now Dean Fogg smells like mint. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that works. Because who actually wants to use a soap that smells like whiskey, that <laughs> smells like booze? That doesn't sound appealing. But for this, it doesn't actually smell like whiskey. I mean, even Dean Fogg, right, with his bespoke suits and his class and air, like, he wouldn't want to smell like whiskey either. He might cover it with a mint. Right. Totally. It makes all the sense. Uh, Carissa, yeah, we are reading the chat. So if you have any questions on the jazz, you pop them on. Do the thing. Paula, I'm so glad that you started watching The Magicians. The Magicians is amazing. amazing. Yes, it's one of our favorite obsessions for sure. We go back and forth, but I uh, regularly claim that it is the best show ever made. Yes, it totally is. I, I no, you're on board. actually agree, I think. I think. I mean, the other one is a very close second. But what other one? Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy is a great show. I mean, it was like... I mean, so, the, yeah, we only go through that because of the music episodes. Right. That's the only reason that there's any disagreement. They're two wildly different shows, but... Yeah, but they're two great shows that do musical episodes. Yeah, totally. And All right. I hold that uh, The Magicians probably has more good content with musical episodes, but Grace and Adam might have one or two that are just better musical episodes. Yeah, totally. I don't know. Magicians has really great musical episodes. The Soprentis loves the musical episodes in The Magicians because they're 80s music. Right. And she's weirdly obsessed with 80s music. <laughs> she wasn't around. Which, but, yeah, um, I, I don't get it at all. Like, I was barely around in the... <laughs> <laughs> My sister-in-law hates The magician or hates ma The Magicians. I don't know if she's seen The Magicians. You better not hate The Magicians, but she hates the 80s. So there's that. She's not a fan. I mean, I'm not a fan of the 80s. Or even really the music, unless it's covers by the magician. Right, because that was great. Yeah. So, do you want to do the glass thing? Do you want to talk about my glass? Because I mean, maybe you there's should, been uh, quite the controversy. I mean, that's some stained and broken plastic. Yeah, no, I brought that too, because that's fun. But there's been some weird controversy that's going on in the soaping community right now um, about how you should not use glass for making soap. And you guys might not know this, but Mr. Soap and Clay, he works in commercial construction, but he spent his entire career in some sort of a glazing industry. So glass. And he's been responsible for, you know, small builds, right? Like residential glass yeah, yeah. and shower doors and everything. I mean, back, but when, back when I was a child. We did when you were a literal child. Yeah. <laughs> but now he works commercial construction and is responsible for those giant buildings that you see popping up in all of the you know, big cities, they have a ton of glass and a ton of steel and all the jazz. So he's a subject matter expert when it comes to glass. And I have a, uh, 
a Pyrex that I've been using for about six years, seven <laughs> years, and you guys have seen it on the channel a lot. And I just learned in the last few weeks that there was any sort of controversy around using glass for heat and baking and mixing of soaps and all that sort of thing. So this piece of Pyrex specifically came up because of all the years that it's been in use and that maybe some light surface scratches or some nicks were reason to take it out of service, essentially. Right. Yeah, and so I want him to inspect my Pyrex. Now this is one that I have decided to, well, I'm not gonna say anything. We're just gonna have him look at my <laughs> Pyrex and talk about things like surface scratches <clears throat> and whether or not etching is possible within like the lie world. Yeah, so um, we talked about this a bit. Um, etching of glass with a base cannot be accomplished. Why? Because it's already a base. You can't etch it with what it's made of. Right. Soda, soda lime, soda is the base. Right. So when we etch glass, which we do purposefully, you know, to make patterns or signs or whatever, you have to use a strong acid to etch into the surface. You can't break that surface with a base or a neutral. So anything you've got here after putting lye in it, lye solution, it cannot be etched. It can be surface abrasions from, you know, like the granules that you're stirring and you're rubbing against the edge. But none of that is breaking the surface tension. You're at, what, 10,000 PSI surface tension on a piece of tempered glass. Right. You, you're just giving it a scuff. Like none of that. And that, that's hazy. I mean, it's it's scratched up for sure, but it's just surface abrasions. None of that has hurt the integrity of the glass. So the glass is fine, continuing to make in it, like this area here. Yeah, that, and also the temperature differential that you're working with. Now, how hot does your lye solution get, your lye and water? Now, here's the thing. Like, if you were to make the lye solution in a Pyrex, which I don't ever do, um, I always use my little craft. The steel one. The steel one. Right. And, or the steel ones, because I have a bunch now. But if you were to make it, it would go from like room temperature water, room temperature glass, like 60 degrees, right? Let's just say 60 degrees. Right. To almost 200 degrees within a couple, around 30 seconds. Right. A couple hundred degrees, like boiling water. Right. What is tempered glass rated for? So it's rated for a temperature differential of over 400 degrees. Yeah. And a differential is difference between whatever temperature it is. So if it's in a room and it's 60 degrees, the glass is 60 degrees. So you need a temperature differential in excess of 460 degrees, yeah. what you're putting in it, to induce any sort of thermal shock. Sure. Any sort of, uh, you, the only way you can break it is to put something that's more than 400 degrees plus the room temperature that the glass is to possibly break it. Right. But you've probably still got 20 or 30 degrees over that. Sure. And to my knowledge, with soaping, you're not putting anything in the glass, cold glass, room temperature glass, that's 400 degrees. Yeah. Now, I hear a lot of people talk about uh, heat spots, right? Now, keep in mind for this, for the record, there is no right or wrong tool to use. I mean, except for like aluminum. Don't make soap in aluminum pans. Like, sure. Uh, but aluminum pans that are coated with something are a completely different story as well. Yeah, and they all are. So you've got, we've done uh, you know, aluminum counters that has um, a baked on epoxy paint finish. Right, for my counters at the shop. Right, but even if you didn't have that, aluminum exposed to air immediately creates an anodized layer, which is this thick layer of, well, it's not thick, it's you know microscopic, but it's this layer of basically impervious oxidized aluminum and you'd have to scratch through that before the lye could even react with it. The anodized on top of aluminum, which all of it has, like I've got some scrap aluminum around here, this has been sitting outside, that will not react with the lye solution because you have to get down to the actual chemical structure of aluminum, not the oxidized layer on top. Interesting. So you'd have to scratch a deep scratch in it and then put the lye solution on it before it could react. Fair point, but aluminum is easier to scratch even with the surface. So it's probably a good idea to avoid it entirely. But yeah, this is general. again, for the record, not a plastic versus glass and one is better than the other. It's just this whole thing has been coming out quite a bit. And you know, like me, I've been getting weird things on my videos, but also the Soap Queen is getting big hate right now. And that's 
weird to me. And so glass expert here. Yeah, so, I mean, if you go in plastic versus glass, I'm a glass man. So no, I know you're a glass man, but that doesn't mean tempered glass can't break because I've broken tempered glass before. No, it can absolutely break. So even with this bit, if you um, so the surface tension, the surface strength of tempered glass is. 10 to 12 times stronger than regular annealed glass. Annealed glass is like window glass in your house. That yeah. You throw a baseball through it and it breaks in these terrible, sharp, big shards. Tempered glass is like the uh, side window of a car that breaks into these tiny little bits. Or your shower doors. Shower doors, yeah. Um, shelves and refrigerators. Anywhere where you're likely to break something and hurt yourself is tempered glass. It's safety glass. Right. I mean, we use it you know, in, in commercial doors because if someone kicks it, and it breaks you don't want them having been injured and being able to sue you right but the uh the surface of it is much stronger than the edge so we've taken a uh, tempered glass before and thrown hammers and hatchets and things at it at the surface and it bounces off right it doesn't break but you could take a center punch and pop it on the edge and it'll shatter right because the edges and it's weird with a, a round thing because of the way that a circle dissipates Force. I mean, that's why the Romans made arches because it would spread the force out. So that might not actually happen if I pop this with a punch. Yeah. But a square piece of glass, you pop the edge with a punch, you can guarantee to break tempered. Right. You could also probably throw a hammer at this and not break it if you hit it on the side. Right. Interesting. So it's going to be the edges that have a problem. Chris actually did ask a good question in chat. He just asked why we wouldn't we use safety glass in normal windows. What's the um, right just, answer for the, that? It's the cost. The cost, really. right. Because yeah. it costs so, way more. Yeah, tempered glass is run through a, a tempering oven, which raises the temperature of the glass to, uh, I, think, I believe, 600 degrees or so Celsius. It's a lot. And then it's cooled um, specifically. There are air fans that cool the surface uh, at a specific angle while keeping the center of the glass, the thickness of the glass, from cooling as quickly and that's how you create that uh, surface tension layer. And it's just, it's three times more expensive than producing regular annealed glass where you just melt it and pour it into a sheet and let it cool. And that's the only reason. There you go. Totally makes sense. Mm. There you go, Chris. <laughs> and also, yeah. So, Prentice, this is where the Pyrex went. Were you dying looking for it? <laughs> she tried to mix it. She must it have been losing her mind. Like, like, oh my God, where did it go? <laughs> There's another one. There's multiple ways to make soap and whatever. Um, <laughs> I have decided to retire this one, though. Why have I decided to retire that? Because you've dropped it a few times, I believe. <laughs> and you can tell the damage. You can see exactly where the damage is. Yeah, it's got, you know, I mean, that you... That's probably impact, right? Yeah. You smack something with it. Right. And it nicked a bit off. This one that where it's shaled off, where it's taken a, a layer, I, I feel like it had to have fallen on this ridge. Right. Like face down and sheared that off. Right. And so that, with, with a tempered piece of glass, that could have been enough to shatter the whole thing. Sure. The fact that it sheared off, that it clamshelled, is uh, actually quite impressive. But that would mean that you've got a weak spot there which is where you leverage on it. So that maybe would justify retiring it. Right. But at the same time, if it didn't break, it's probably not gonna from that. Yeah, it was actually very impressive because these were two different drops and in one, a little piece here at the spout came off and another, it kind of created a pretty big chunk actually came off here. And my issue with that is it's the handle now and I'm concerned that when I heat things, especially for like master batching, I take all of my oils and melt them down, you know, in the microwave or whatever, using a bunch of these, because I got a lot of microwaves, and um, it gets real hot, right? And so every time I take it out, now knowing that this is here, I'm nervous that it's going to, like the handle's gonna like shear off and I'm gonna drop a bunch of hot oil. So this one is ready to retire, but it's not because of any of this. like. You can see all these scratches and everything in here, but you can't feel them with your finger. Like they're not. Yeah, they're not actually scratches. They're not actually they're, scratches. They're just microscopic surface abrasions. Right. So there's that. Yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to use that. I mean, even for you know 300, 350 degree. I liquid. loved. Yeah, that too. The Soprentis. It's it, it does. It slices George's gloves. 
I love that Nancy has tempered glass in her in her windows at her house. And I get it. I lived in Arizona, and it was hot. It was so hot. <laughs> Way hotter than 600 degrees. Way hotter than 600 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds miserable. That's one of those crazy places where, like, you can literally just take an egg outside, like, on the sidewalk and fry the egg. Like, on... It was so hot. But that's like mind blowingly hot. Is it Arizona, like Phoenix? Isn't that like Los Angeles, where everyone has a pool in the backyard? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. If six hundred degrees, live... your pool would be boiling. Well, I mean, I think they like do some sort of thing for their pool, so it stays the constant temperature. There's a thing. Got it. I don't know anything about pools, but you know, it was hot, and you just live in air conditioning all of the time. Like Los Angeles, yeah. Yeah. You go is... from the air conditioned house to the air conditioned car, the air conditioned office, and then reverse to go home. Which is also why we don't... Go outside when it's 105 degrees. Yeah, it's also why we don't live there anymore. <laughs> now, it was Chastity Cat says she sands her chipped baking Pyrex. Is that a good thing to do? No. No, okay, why no. not? We're because... not... No hate, no hate, do your thing. <laughs> like, for real, like, live your best life, for sure. Well, so, but we got glass guys, so I'm curious. So the thing is with Pyrex, Pyrex is a brand, right? Yeah. Like, the, this is actual Pyrex brand. Right. But that's not a type of glass. That's just a brand. And it may or may not be tempered. It may or not be borosilicate. It may or may not be soda lime. Right. So if it is a tempered soda lime glass, the sanding can actually cause it to spontaneously burst. Interesting. Okay. Because you take like if you if we sanded this, which I cannot believe that this much of it sheared off and it didn't pop the whole thing. If this is a tempered piece of glass, right? Which I can't confirm. Right. But if well, it is, Pyrex is now their tempered glass. So if That's this what is a they say on their glass, website. And that much came off of that. And you go to sand down rough edges that are catching Sir Prentice's gloves. That bit of material you're taking off, that could get through that surface tension layer. Right. And get into the low tension layer. And that will cause it to pop. Okay. So it could blow in your hands if you're sanding it. It could also be fine depending on how deep you're going and how deep the gouge is. Oh, well, she's got vintage. So that's different. She has borosilicate. So vintage borosilicate may not probably is not tempered however no, non-tempered borosilicate has a lower thermal shock value than tempered soda lime glass weird by a couple hundred degrees that's interesting but again you're not going to exceed that temperature you're not putting 280 degrees of liquid in your fire x sure that i'm aware of yeah i mean that, no one ever really goes above boiling right which is well, that's something to like Fahrenheit. That's something that we always do within like the soap world or whatever when we're like figuring out temperatures and all this and whatever. Like, and yes, always be careful for sure. But like, we still have to keep in mind that what we're the temperatures that we're dealing with, that's still below the boiling point of water. Right. And, and if you can put this into boil water in your microwave to get it to boiling, which people commonly do with their Pyrexes, right? I think people need to stop freaking out about glass. Now, granted, there are some dangers for breaking glass. And so since there is danger for breaking glass, people don't do glass. They don't want to because it can break. Yeah, of course. It's it can. possible. Yeah. So, you know, people like to do plastic. <laughs> I'm going to let you state your opinions on plastic first because I have strong ones. It broke. We dropped it and it broke. So it can break too. Um, it breaking on an edge though, obviously you're not cleaning up like if that thing exploded, if my glass Pyrex exploded, then that would suck. It'd be a huge mess. But you know, plastic comes with its drawbacks too. And my biggest issue is plastic is a semi-permeable, you know, material. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> but it stains anybody who has any sort of it stains and it also holds scents and it holds stuff because it's permeable um anybody who's ever put their spaghetti sauce into a plastic container and then it's forever red around the can attest to that and this is actually this is a number five plastic this is all completely safe for all the things and yet i never heat anything up in that in my uh, soap shop and I only use those buckets for my soap making classes where they're doing like a pound at a time so very small amounts and um, well bath bombs 
I have a whole slew of these containers for bath bomb classes. What are your opinions on a uh, plastic? So I have abhorred plastic for anything regarding heat since I was about nine years old and I put a tub of butter from the fridge into the microwave sure. to melt it. It's a terrible idea. To make it, you know, spreadable. It's a terrible it came idea. from the fridge, not even the freezer. Right. But... So it's you know, it's forty degrees away. You can throw it in the freezer for a couple of minutes. So the plastic it got you know, microwaves don't heat evenly. So the butter melted at the bottom and then I guess it was boiling at the bottom. And it melted out the bottom of this big tub of butter that used to exist. I don't even see them around anymore. And all of that it was full. And I had to clean up I'm going to say three pounds of butter. It was nearly yeah. this size because the plastic melted at the bottom and the butter was still hot at the top. Yeah. If I'd done that in glass, the butter would have melted and everything would have been fine. And after cleaning that up, then I started working with plastic containers for like uh, mixing paints and that sort of thing. And it's the same as this. Like everything stains. It's just, it's so porous and absorbent and you never feel like like you've made soap in this, yeah? Is that what that is? That's just been for bath bombs. Just for bath bombs? Yep. So that's just some of the colorant for a bath bomb. Right. Some micas or whatever. Right. Well, you can never ever take that and make food in it. Right. Because you've got this stuff leached into the side that's always there, and then that's going to leach into whatever it is that you make in it. Sure. With glass... You can clean that up. Yeah, I don't know that anybody, any soap maker would actually use their... I mean, I know that there are soap makers that do that, so I shouldn't say no soap maker would. But for the most part, I think we like to keep our, our things separate. There's food stuff and there's soap stuff just for yeah, cleansies. Which, which you certainly but, should do. Like when my brother was over and you guys were doing the beer thing and he was talking about he doesn't mix in plastic, he doesn't brew in plastic, he doesn't do any of it in plastic. It's all glass yeah. because he doesn't want the properties of the beer to transfer to the next batch. Right. Which is why I love glass. Exactly. Over, Because if I'm trying to make like something that doesn't smell like this, which I think is a love spell dupe that's going to just be like <laughs> in that forever, and I want to make lavender and don't want to have some love spell scent going on, on in there, then yeah, I mean, it's it might transfer. It's the thing. Uh, Mr. Herx Homemade said he missed it. Can we mix lye water and Pyrex? I'm... Um, I do not make the soap around here, but absolutely yes. The temperature differential is such that there's no reason not to. The uh, the master soaper may err on the side of um, PC and say otherwise. Yeah, I'm going to err on the side of I don't want anybody getting hurt. And just in case there's a hot spot that could randomly whatever. The chances of it happening, very, very minuscule. But if you can get like a stainless steel pitcher, like do that. Do that. I've had numb problems with those giant crafts that I use, like they're like milk frothers. Yeah, they're yeah. delightful. I, and so I must interject though that to create a hot spot hot enough to break a piece of tempered glass, you're going to need a torch, not hot liquid. Yeah, and we were actually going to do that on a live, and we are still going to do the video. We just decided not to do it on a live because we're in the pontoon doing the thing thing <laughs> and um i will test it to failure but i don't want to blow glass up all over the bar that's the thing yeah if if we end up exploding something using torches or whatever i don't want that all over the pontoon or like we have electronics we have the big tv and like the we <laughs> yeah this actually stemmed from the whole candle thing right right like candle wicks and wax and glass and all that and that's all annealed glass it's not even tempered yeah it's like Baseline glass, right? Cheap and easy as you can get. Even that, right? You get not just the flame from a wick right. from burning from some wax. You're going to need a torch. You're going to need a concentrated, you know, force-fed flame. Yeah, that's literally to, where it stemmed from. Up. With someone talking about like floating wicks and stuff, and I'm yeah. like, <laughs> stop. Also, reusing candle um, things, which is actually something I haven't re I haven't really researched. I'm looking at a candle over there right now. I'm just. <laughs> Not and the glass is not exploding. It's and the glass is not exploding. Glass, I'm assuming, and it's not exploding. I haven't really researched whether or not you can reuse glassware in your candles because uh, I don't make a lot of candles. Like I don't make actual candles, but I will. And we're gonna try to explode some candle glass too, just for fun. But again, not live. We're gonna put it in a very safe, <laughs> contained environment, so all the glass is contained and not. Yeah, we're gonna put it way out in the, the back of the property on a stump, and then we'll test it to failure. And we'll do an uh, infrared thermometer on it, yeah? And we'll see how many hundreds of degrees it takes to pop the glass. Right. With a very concentrated torch. 
Chastity Cat just said, I always thought you were literally out on a pontoon boat with seven monitors. <laughs> no clue it was a reference. <laughs> yeah, no, we actually, uh, we built a, during, you know, quarantine and everything, we built a fire pit in the backyard as well as a bar. And we ended up naming it the pontoon because of a Sugarland song. It's not Sugarland, but it is a song called Pontoon. It's not Sugarland. No. It's a great song. It's a song called Pontoon. And so we, it all became like a nautical theme, which makes sense because we live in the Pacific Northwest and people have boats. Like we have one. We don't know how to. <laughs> we don't know how to use it, but we have one. Yeah, we don't have a pontoon. We have a sailboat. And we don't know how to sail it. But we live across the street from a bay, so nautical theme made sense. So we've got rope railings and lifelines and buoys and. Things hanging off of the the pontoon. Yeah. But no, we're not on a boat. We could be. Could be. We could do one of these on a the boat. That'd be wild. That'd There's be too scary. much to think about in the bar in the in the on a boat. So let's just stay in the bar for this <laughs> stuff. Like we'll just drop anchor. Yeah. It's actually interesting that you were talking about your little story about like melting the glass or the plastic in the microwave or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because these things, these beakers. Now I use these for all manner of things. You guys have seen them in the videos. And for the most part, I use them for colorants, right? But I also, in my classes, I use them to mix a lye solution. Cause it's a very small solution. And also, some of them are used for melting melt and pour when we just have a little amount that we need to melt down or whatever. Now, these are rated to some ridiculous heat. Temp I mean, I would have to look it up. But they're, they're science beakers. They're used in whatever. And the soap apprentice can attest the number of... These guys that have melted down, they're supposed to be way more heat resistance, way more anything than all of the things. The number of times we've melted these down in the microwave with melt and pour. So I've had more problems with plastic personally in my soaping experience than with glass. And again, this is no hate. You do you. However you want to do your soaping journey, there's no right or wrong way. It's not glass, glass versus plastic. It's There are pros and cons to both. And so, this little beaker guy, lots of them. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind with that, specifically talking about microwave, is everyone knows that microwaves create weird heat spots where you microwave in dinner from yesterday and one edge of it will be like 6,000 degrees and the other side is still cold. Yeah. Because of the way microwaves work, because right. they excite molecules, right. right? I mean, that's how they create heat. Sure. And that's why you can melt a bit of plastic where the glass is just fine because you can't excite those molecules. Because it's porous, because the molecular structure is looser, you can excite it and specifically in one spot you can excite it, make a hot spot that melts out of this little little pinhole where everything else is fine. You can't do that with glass. Sure. Because of the way it dissipates heat and the tighter molecular structure, you cannot create a hot spot that's going to melt through. Right. That totally makes sense. Apparently, so Prentice's boyfriend's taking a sailing class right now. That's excellent. And Jessica, I'm so glad that you're using microfiber. Like, that's great because they're reusable. You wash them and you continue to do the things. Continue on through life. It's great. It's way easier and better <laughs> for the environment and all the things. And that's another secondary problem with plastic versus glass too, trying to figure out what is better for the environment as, you know, you want to be an eco-warrior and do the things. Glass. Yeah, but they're problematic both are problematic um because there's we're nothing, running out of sand there's also nothing petroleum based that goes into glass there's nothing petroleum based that goes into glass to produce plastic is petroleum based right you have to keep the oil fields open if you want to keep making plastic right but we're going to keep the oil fields open because and we're never going to run out of sand you don't because think we're going to we run out of sand? glass that Grind was one of the up, interesting things that I, I i read actually recently that said something to the effect of like 60% of recycled glass ends up being crushed down and used for a cover for a landfill because it's cheaper to do that than recycle it, which is very problematic. Think about all the glass bottles that we recycle. That's fine because you're still returning that ground up glass to the earth. You don't have to have, you don't have to go to a beach to have sand. I mean, actually the oil fields up in Canada, yeah. they're sand fields. Really? They're harvesting and, and filtering oil out of the sand like millions and millions of metric tons of sand come out of the oil fields in canada interesting and a lot of that goes into glass production interesting so net net 
plastic, glass, pros, cons, with both, live your best life and stop <laughs> telling people that they're wrong because you decided they are. Not you guys specifically, not the people that are on this stream right now because you guys are awesome. But you know, just in general, I've said it so many times in all of these videos, there is not much that you can do to actually screw up soap, you know? And there are some safety precautions that everybody should take for sure. Like I'm one of those people who I will always put my gloves on to make soap. However, I know that there are OG like soap makers out there that have been doing it since they were like five and they're like 70 now. They don't wear gloves. Fine. I won't do it and I'm not going to like put it on the thing. I think we lost stream. Are we dead? What's going on? I don't know. I did think we a, just... Did it have a timer or something? I don't know. It says we're... Are we still on, guys? The camera shut off. Really? Yeah. How did that happen? I don't even know. Wow. Is it on a timer? I don't know. Yeah, it's totally off. The camera shut off. Is the audio still going? You guys have audio, yeah, cool. The video shut off, good. Let's see, can hear, live but black. You are amazing, just audio, we can hear you. I love it, I love it. Let's see if we can get the audio back, or the video back on. Our camera shut off, guys, I don't know why. This is a really fancy um, camera that Mr. Soap and Clay got me for uh, Christmas, and we're still trying to figure it all out, which is another reason that uh, my brother should have should have stayed tech guy what happened are we back do we have do we have audio or video again some cameras shut off at 30 minutes thank you that's problematic oh my goodness we're back up here we're back up here maybe just have to hit the stop button again well, I mean, I can't really stop the streaming, right? Because it's already streaming. Right. And it's back. We're back, back, right? We're back. All right. Somebody just said, yes. Okay, we're back. Good. <laughs> Good. Right. We now, need, we need to fix that. Since they said somebody, somebody said that the cameras or the, some cameras shut off after 30 minutes, we're probably going to lose feed again if we go longer than 30 more minutes. Oh. And then we're going to have to mess with some settings. Yeah, we got to fix that. Oh my gosh. We this need... is not only our first live stream, but first live with this equipment. So um, many technical difficulties. And we've, we've probably not tested as much as we would like with this equipment and this setup. Yeah. So next time we will have all these bugs worked out and the camera won't shut off after half an hour. Yeah, we've literally never like just sat in front of a camera like... It's never been longer than 30. That's interesting. We've never done that for the tests. Yeah, even the last thing we recorded, right, like day 366, we were not even using this camera, yeah? Yeah, we weren't. We weren't, yeah. So this is the very first time that this camera's served anything. All new tech. Good. I'm glad that I'm that everybody can see us again and we're back. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that was weird. Just yeah, randomly. That, uh, that shutting off after 30 minutes is not acceptable. Yeah. See if you can change auto shut off time. Yes, we will work on that. Thank you. Hey, Sony, if you're listening, you failed us. Yeah, Sony, what the hell? It's not cool. Yes. Now, so the glass stuff, cool. How about the themes we've been doing? We just finished up Labyrinth. You just finished up Labyrinth. The Soprentish, yeah. You've, you've released a couple of magicians. Yes. Which is awesome. Yes. I mean, that's going to be your coolest series i don't know if it's gonna be the coolest we've got some really cool ones <laughs> planned but what do you which one do you have there we have all the labyrinth ones here. oh you've got these have all been released yeah yeah and you haven't smelled any of them or even seen them <laughs> more blind smelling well, I, mean, I mean they're you... lovely yeah the soap princess did a great job with those <clears throat> the soap princess make all of them she did the entire labyrinth series on her own i was supposed to do a couple of them and then you just said nah. I was in the weeds for the magician stuff. Like <laughs> that was a lot of work. Yeah. It was crazy, and so she ended up doing all of them, and also learned how to cut slabs in that time period. Like she was always big, scared to cut slabs, and now she's a pro. 
Wait, so Prentice has just learned how to cut slabs? Yeah, well, I mean, she didn't want to do it, so I did it. All right, then. It's all good. That's impressive. Yeah. And that's... Got, I, I remember the Fire Gang video. You were not happy with them. Not with the bar, but with the Fire Gang. You were scared or something. Yeah, Chris, we did announce that a couple months ago, or at least a month ago, when we hit uh, 7K. Was that the goal? I think. And all three of the boxes have been mailed out now. So that's awesome. Although one came back to me and I couldn't find the thread, but I was really glad I screen capped it because I messed up the address, which is problematic considering the number of orders that I send out every day. I messed up an address. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Just blame the post office. Can't blame the post office for everything. They work so hard. Blame UPS. They work so hard. Uh, Chastity Cat, do I use any store-bought soaps or lotions? I do not use any store-bought soaps or lotions. I make everything. Um, laundry soap I do buy because I have one of those <coughs> really expensive, you know, high efficiency, you know, washers and dryers or whatever. Like, we just bought one of those things and I cried because we had to. Cool. We had like an old 1970s washer and it finally died. And so we had to like upgrade. And so I don't, laundry detergent is great. If that's what you want to make and you want to do, you do you. I just got really like freaked out about putting that in my washer. And so I do buy proper laundry detergent, but no other soaps or lotions. Everything I make on my, on my own. So that's fun. You watched Labyrinth today. That's awesome. I love Labyrinth. It's actually been a minute since I've seen it. I would say the last time I watched Labyrinth was the day we found out Bowie died. And that was terrible. So I watched it then and it was a sad day. That was a rough one. Yes. We went to a memorial or something, yeah? A brewery? A Bowie? No, well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, it was a couple months after he died. We It turned off again. That's not been 30 minutes. It's not been 30 minutes at all. This is ridiculous, you I guys. I'm so have sorry. A, a battery issue with it. I don't know. This is very odd to me, though. I really don't know why it's... Because that was not 30 minutes no, at all. And we're dead again. Five minutes. This is going to be the most annoying feat ever. Hello, people. We are gone again. Um, yeah. It says it's got full battery. It's full battery. Camera overheating. Is that a thing? Can that happen? Oh, wow. It is oh, Caitlin cool. said she can still see me. That's really? weird. Nope, it's, it can't. It's impossible because we're on the camera. No, the camera's warm, though. Is it warm? It is. Oh, warm. it's overheating. Cool, that's interesting. I wonder. Well, that's problematic, guys. Apparently, our camera's overheating. If we undo this and go. I don't really know. I mean, it's not that warm. It's warm, it's not that warm. That's true, exactly. That's a really good point, Debbie. The phone calls, we talk just fine. Yeah, I don't think my camera likes us at all, Munchkin, you're right. Um, yes, Debbie, I have seen soap cut with fishing line or dental clouds. That's a really good idea. You could totally do that if the soap is soft enough. Like, if you're cutting it within, you know, a couple days after pouring it, you can totally do that, for sure. Um, our feed is back on as far as the video goes, I think. So, there's that. But it might just decide to die on us again and we'll have to figure this out between now and the next live so great yeah i think we're gonna have to run some more experiments here overheating is an issue some models have i would send it in for a replacement asap or get a different model and a quiet fan and blow at it that should help cool yeah we're gonna <laughs> do all this hey thanks for being a part of these weird technical issues streams guys i appreciate that thanks we're for not hating and just making suggestions about that right i like suggestions because that's part of what we do over here right we're all finding a big cool tribe where we just we don't do mean things to each other and we help each other out so i love that <laughs> and things not working it's not on purpose yeah it's not intentional at all 
But what do we have going on for the rest of the... We have uh, the rest of the magicians going. Right. You've released two. Right. And did you watch those two? Did you see? I watched most of them. Yeah? Hmm. How, what do you think the Jane bar? I love the Jane bar. That Jane thing is bar. insane. Yes. That was lovely. The Jane bar is gorgeous. And this is the Jane bar scent. So it's the eucalyptus and tea leaves. I mean, I shouldn't have told you that. Well, I saw it on the video. Right. I shouldn't have told you that's what you're about to smell, though. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> that is very lovely. Yeah. I love eucalyptus. There's definite tea leaves out, too. Like an Earl Grey tea, which makes all the sense in the world, doesn't it? It sure does. She's very English. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love this. Oh, we're actually doing... We got, like, a weird sponsorship thing. Um for some videos that we're going to be doing actually with tea so i'm very excited about that so you know look out for that but yeah so we have the rest of the magicians which are eight more bars eight which is a lot eight bars it's a lot of bars a total of 10 bars 40 done two so a total of 10. so the rest are the other eight I think this got lost in the first feed cut what is the map on the wall up above the hamilton picture that's tamriel from the uh, Elder Scrolls series, because I love the Elder Scrolls. So it's one of our favorite video games. It's an RPG, in case those are not familiar. <laughs> those who are not familiar with it, it's what it is. And I love that you guys are having a good time on the thing. It's like we are hanging out together, for sure. Yeah. yeah. For good or for ill. For good or for ill. Hey, <laughs> technical difficulties abound, but we're all here for it, so that's good. So Hoggle smells the best. Hoggle is really great, so I actually used this for one of the magician bars, too. Good call. And it's a really great scent. She did good such move. a great job with all of these designs, though. Like, look how pretty the Hoggle bar is. It's so beautiful. But when does she not do a good job? Never. The answer to that is never. Somebody actually asked me when she graduates from So Prentice, and I'm like, <laughs> never. I mean, she already has, but what am I going to call her? Like a, a journeyman? You can't make some sort of kitschy soap thing out of journeyman. Soapyman? Soapyman. <laughs> but then it's like, she's soapyman. Why not soapy person? You know, why not journey person? There are lots of females in the trades, so probably, it should be person. We're probably headed that direction, yeah, actually. We need to change that. So, there's a lot of there's a lot of women in those fields too, so it's good. On the side of um, you know, on the side of high rise construction, there's a big hoist. It's like an external elevator. It's got a big mass that goes all the way up. And for years and years and years, it was called a man lift because that's how you transfer personnel from the ground floor to the fiftieth floor where they're working. Sure. Man lift. You put a bunch of men in it and you lift them up. And then we had to change it to um, well, they changed it to man and material hoist. Which still said man. Right. And in the last five years, it has just been changed to personnel hoist. So when you say man lift at a meeting, which is what we were just all trained to do for 30 years. Right. Oh, no, we don't have any man lifts. Right, but there's six of them on the side of the building. <laughs> Got to change the name. Oh, it's a personnel hoist. Right. Well, it's good. Fine. That's fine. I like it. I like it. But we are, we're moving. This industry, my industry, the, the commercial construction industry, is like the last holdout. It's, right. It's where everyone just refuses to evolve. Sure. Progress. Yeah. And cameras shut off. Cameras shut off again. Yes. <laughs> so we might be just be doing an audio only feed for the rest of this lap. We might be doing another audio only. I find it interesting that Chastity, Chastity said eucalyptus smell can kill cats. Is that like actual eucalyptus oil or just the scent because that can be created um, in a lab. That's interesting, like super interesting and very problematic. So many scents are toxic to pet. Yeah, for sure. Like when I do the dog soaps and everything, <coughs> my God, there are like two essential oils that I can use. That's it. It's incredible how delicate dogs actually are. Yeah, no, it's uh, wild. Uh, I don't know how true all of the things are that I hear, but I hear just over and over and over this long list of things that kill dogs. They just drop dead. Yeah, tea tree is a really bad thing for cats too. Like cats, just in general, if you're gonna if you're gonna have cats, you need to be really careful with the essential oils just across the board, for sure. And I'm I'm glad that people are totally fine with the fact that <laughs> I just keep freaking talking and. Um, 
Well, if the camera keeps dying. Camera keeps dying. Like, it's all good. We're fine. We're all here. <laughs> it's being very obnoxious. Yeah, no, there's a lot that goes on in all of the essential oil stuff, for sure. I still wonder, though, is it essential oil scent? Or is it just the eucal... Is it like... Or is it the eucalyptus scent? Or is it the essential oil? It would have to be legitimate eucalyptus oil. Because you can create a, a, like. a eucalyptus scent without using an essential right. oil within that. I feel like that's saying, you know, I'm allergic to vanilla extract. But imitation vanilla is not going to hurt you. Right. Because it's not the same thing at all. Right. Imitation vanilla is actually interesting because I think Chris was the one who told me on one of the videos and I was talking about the difference with vanillin content. There's like a vanillin and like an ethyl vanillin. And ethyl vanillin is essentially like what that is, like vanilla, like the full vanilla oil, right, that you use for cooking, vanilla extract, hmm. versus, because that's not an essential oil, um, versus the imitation vanilla flavor. It's like that. So a lot of scents don't have any vanillin in them, but they have ethyl vanillin in them, and they'll still discolor. So that's really weird. Yeah, when the I oils hear, or livers cannot break it down. That's good to know. Yeah. When I hear vanillin, I think lanolin, and then I think of Will Ferrell, and it just makes me smoke. Lanolin, like sheep's wool. Exactly. <laughs> like sheep's wool. What's va vanillin? Like sheep's wool. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking since our camera keeps losing its mind right now. <laughs> We might want to call the stream. Yeah, we might want to dial in our technical difficulties and try another live in a bit. Violet, I love that you listen to YouTube videos instead of necessarily watching. Because, like, legit, I do that too. <laughs> I am always streaming YouTube, but I'm never, like, actually watching YouTube. I just like listening to people that I, that I like talk about interesting things and so Wait, can they see your shirt speaking of listening to people while you oh are. yeah i listen to them all the time that's all the thing i'm a friend of the pod <laughs> like, that's the theme for today also it's it's not great dan if you're not familiar with friend of the pod look that up you'll enjoy it it's a very cool podcast and youtube channel for sure the fragrance oil has in bases yes you're right. Um, the, a lot of fragrance oils right now, actually, their bases are essential oils. They are based in essential oils for sure. And you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, you've yet to see a live stream channel where video and audio just worked. I love that. Thank you. That makes me feel so good and so much better about this because I was actually thinking that as soon as we ended the stream, I was going to cry a little bit because the camera kept turning off. But that's making me... Feel much better That's about it. Best. Apparently, our current technology is not advanced enough. We're in 2021, and we're experimenting with VR, and we have satellite internet, and we, and we can't make a live stream work. We're sending civilians to Mars, but we can't get things to stream. Properly. With some reasonably expensive technology in front of us. Like, there's there's like $3,000 worth of equipment just like right here. And it's still failing. I'm freaking out, and it's still failing. I'm like, blaming you too. What I'm even sorry. is happening here? so much for i'm just gonna go back to filming with the iphone and just be done with it because it wouldn't overheat and do this this is what we're doing for the next live we're just gonna do it on the iphone it has a great camera and it's never overheated and it's never overheated it's never turned off well this one sony like i said this is it's first tour of duty here and it's uh it's not in its stripes yet yeah it's true it, it's going to work we're going to make it work I mean, it has to because this particular camera was specifically designed and created for YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. But we're going to shut off after a few minutes and we're going to overheat in just a normal temperature room. Right. We're not going to cooperate and we're going to make your live stream fail with a piece of equipment specifically designed to do exactly just for what you for. Just for the YouTubers. That's awesome. Love that. Yeah. It's like having a truck that won't tow things. Right. It's just not acceptable. Right. We can't do it. It makes no sense. We're going to make it earn its money. It's going to have to. We're going to figure it out. We'll put a fan <laughs> on it. Do something. <laughs> it's just like with the Xbox that was always overheating or whatever, and you just put a little fan on it to keep yeah, it cool. Yeah, yeah. You can do something I like that with that. I wonder if they that, because that was specifically for the Xbox. You're good with that. Seriously. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here, Yvette, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> The girly A, uh, welcome to the channel. Welcome, welcome to the Sedzer world. 
I know I'm not looking at the camera right now because the feed is actually over there. I'm not, sorry. I'm going to play this back and be like, gross. Why can't you look at the camera more? You know, but the, you know, it's a life. I just had a thought. We should put a monitor below the camera that has the comments. Yeah, we should do all the things. This is our test then run, guys. Right First there. live. We'll figure some things out for sure. And camera Turned shut off again. Off again. Yes. It's just too toasty in here. Yeah. So while we figure out the camera for the last time, um, what do you guys want to see for, because this is really like our, this day in the in the channel is meant to be with the new format, like our business and test day, right? And I have a lot of ideas for the things that we want to do. I have a lot of ideas for what we should do for business and test days, but I'm really interested to know what you guys would like to see and the things that you would like done because, you know, make sure the battery door is closed, says Horton's Art. Is it closed? Yeah, it's all good. And it still says it has a full charge. Yeah, this is wild. Yes, for yeah, we, sure. We've got some heat dissipation issues here, I think. There's some weirdness going we're on. We're going to deal with that. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have to figure it out. We will do that. We will figure all that out. Because, you know, we don't yeah, I think fail got, at things. I think I've got an idea for next time. Most of the time. The funny thing is, the major like the people who have like known me and been on my channel long enough totally know that... I do fail at things, and I show you all of the disasters. So, pull-throughs. Yeah, because pull-throughs are stupid. <laughs> and I I do that with you and show it to you because, you know, putting on some stylized version of what life is is kind of silly to me, and I don't like it. But So this is completely fitting that we lost the uh, video <laughs> so many times. Like six times. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Well, we've probably got another five minutes out of video. Yeah, Before it shuts over exactly, again. exactly. It's probably about all we have. So yeah, I really do want to know what you guys would like to see as far as business building goes and testing. Obviously, I'll just continue to do those weird tests as they come up. So that for sure. But like testing the weird multi-divider thing. Yeah. How about an emulsified scrub? An emulsified scrub. I've done that. I've done that on the channel. That was, where did you see that? Last oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like try making a emulsified scrub. Yep, yep, yep. I think I left a recipe in that video, too. I'll find it and link it in the actual comments of the video. But I think I... I know that I did one. I'm pretty sure I put the recipe in it, too. I have tried Aztec for fragrance oils. Yes. I don't know that we've done a reaction to them, though. Like, I don't think we've done, like, a just a testing, like a... Just a, a focus test for them. So... They're on the list. The next. Shampoo and conditioning bars. Yeah. Shampoo and conditioning bars. Yes. I've done multiple videos on that. I can link those below too. But we will be doing a re-up on shampoo and conditioning too. I did like a five day deep dive on the different types of shampoo bars as well as conditioner bars. Why you would do what you want to do with all that. For sure. And pricing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yep. I talked about pricing oils uh, about a week ago in a video. Candle signs I have not messed with. Their price points are, they freak me out. But, <laughs> you know, I'm willing to try for are they sure. They're terribly expensive. They're or pretty terribly cheap. They're pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, the next people that, I don't know the next company that we're doing off the top of my head. I forget. The Soprentice is actually right next to the bottle, so if she's still watching, she can. <laughs> Tell me. Um, oh, a ghost story. I love ghost stories. It went dark, Nancy. Now we need everybody's favorite ghost story. <laughs> yes. Yep. So this is going to be probably the end of the stream, which is super weird because we're going to do it in a black screen. And honestly, I don't even think I'm going to edit any of this shit out. I'm just going to <laughs> publish it exactly as is because this is how we roll on this channel for good or for ill. So, um... We're the flaming candle is what we are doing next for the next blind scent test. So that is great. I'm very excited for that. And pricing on your finished product. Sure, yes. No, that's a good one, Petra. We can totally do that for sure. That's a good idea. How to price your finished products is a really great... That's, that's definitely a point of confusion when you're first starting out because you don't want to undersell yourself. But also you want to price within the market. And the market is changing. So... For sure, I'll definitely add that to the list as well. 
But we are definitely weirdly going to end this stream without any freaking video. Do me to fire it back up. Super wild. No, no, no it's good. It's it'll good. Give it's a couple more minutes, maybe. It might not handle it. It's, this poor little Sony candle might die, or this Sony camera might die. Yeah, it's given us less and less time. Every we don't time like we it. Reboot it. Yeah. So. Nature's fragrance. Uh, I've used nature's garden. Is nature's fragrances different? I use the crap out of nature's garden. Like, yeah, I've not for seen sure. nature's fragrance before. Yeah, absolutely. You can add that to the list. Where to find containers, what ships and what doesn't. Mm. That sounds good. How many, what kinds of products to start off with? That is a really <laughs> good question. <laughs> That is start a really good question. 800 products and whittle it down. Yeah, because it's a terrible <laughs> idea to start out with too many, for sure. And Yeah, you should definitely cover that. Yeah, that's actually a good one because I've learned some stuff over the years, for sure. That's uh, why we are currently in the process of whittling everything down to almost nothing, which my web developer is super excited about. <laughs> he loves that. <laughs> So, yeah, so totally. Any other things that you guys think you might want to learn, hear, see, whatever for the uh, the testing and business building section of the new format? Just drop them in the comments, in the live chat, or in the, you know, comment, comment of the video as soon as it's posted. That would be awesome. But I'm, like, super glad that you guys are here and still sticking around for this weirdness right now because this is weird as shit. But, you know, it's cool that it's a it's a thing. And uh, I'm glad that you guys all showed up today. Appreciate you. And um, <laughs> I will see you guys all again, you know, tomorrow. There's a lot of good comments to go through here. There are a lot of good comments here. <laughs> that yep. should be addressed, yeah. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of uh, Soapy Fun. Bye. Bye. Now you're going to have to hit end stream there and on OBS.